Hello, Tonrock. Looking for me? You know, everyone always talks about the legends. Aang, Katara, Toph, and Zuko. But what about those powerful benders quietly making waves in the shadows? Today, we're counting down the top 11 underrated benders from Avatar, The Last Airbender, and The Legend of Korra. These characters may not get the same hype, but their skills deserve a closer look. Let's jump in and give these hidden talents the recognition they truly deserve. Kicking off our list are Wei and Wing. I'm so proud of those two. These twins bring a wild energy to bending. They're agile, acrobatic, and pretty unpredictable. With their earthbending, they can throw around massive boulders and build walls with ease, like we saw in their standoff against Kuvira's army in Operation Beifong. <laughs> Plus, they are skilled metal benders and even invented their own game, Power Disc. If there's ever a call for more creative earthbending, Wei and Wing definitely deliver. Oh, nice power, Wei! <laughs> ha! Wing goes down! At number 10, we've got Milo, Iki, and Janora. You're welcome, Iki. These three musketeers might be young, but they definitely deserve their spot here. Can I count on you three to bring Korra home? You can count on one of us. I don't know about these two ladies. Sure, Janora is known for her spirituality, but she's also a strong airbender with sharp instincts. Milo? His chaotic, explosive style works surprisingly well. <laughs> And Icky is fast, adaptable, and full of potential. Get off our island! These three may not be full-fledged masters yet, with the exception of Janora, but their bending skills are already impressive and only getting better. Watching them grow into their own is one of the best parts of the Legend of Korra. We caught the bad guys. You let them fight? I would have been toast if it weren't for your kids. You should be proud. You taught them well. Number 9 is General Iroh. Tell her we will be arriving in three days' time, and that I look forward to winning back Republic City, together. As you wish, General Iroh. General Iroh II is one of those characters who, even with limited screen time, makes a huge impression in the series. He's the grandson of Zuko, and was named after Uncle Iroh. So yeah, he's carrying some serious family legacy, and you can see it in the way he handles himself. He's super calm, insanely capable, and he's got that wise but badass vibe the Fire Nation Royals are known for. Iroh's fire bending is sharp, with powerful blasts and controlled flame jets, and he even knows lightning bending. He used it mid-battle against the Equalists, targeting their machinery with precision. Iroh's leadership and refined bending style really deserve more recognition, as he represents the future of firebending in a way that's less about rage and more about focus. Next up at number 8 is Kaya. Even as the daughter of Avatar Aang and Katara, Kaya doesn't get nearly the attention she deserves. Her waterbending is super versatile. She's skilled in healing, and she's one of the few who can really hold her own in a serious fight. Kaya's got a balanced, steady approach. She's fierce, but adaptable. She brings a calm energy to waterbending, showing you don't need over-the-top moves to be incredibly powerful. At number 7, we've got Desna and Eska. It's easy to dismiss them because, let's be honest, they're a bit deadpan. But don't let their monotone voices fool you. These two have mastered a unique synced up fighting style that's almost like looking in a mirror. They pull off some impressively coordinated attacks and can hold their own on both land and water, whether they're ambushing a squad or facing big threats. Desna and Eska might come across as unenthusiastic, but their skills are seriously dangerous. <laughs> Number six is the boulder. The boulder feels conflicted about fighting a young, blind girl. We all know the boulder as the earthbending pro wrestler with the dramatic voice. But here's the thing, he's not just for show. This guy has real talent. Built for raw power and intimidation, he can take on multiple opponents and throw huge boulders around like they're pebbles. He might seem a little goofy. The boulder takes issue with that comment. But if you need someone to bring sheer brute force, the boulder is your guy. 
You guys here for a rematch? Negatory! The boulder and the hippo no longer fight for others' entertainment. Now, we fight for our kingdom! At number five, we've got Tonrak. I put you away once, I hear, and I'm going to do it again. Tonrak is a seasoned warrior with some serious feats in raw strength, built from years of training and real experience. He's a powerhouse waterbender, and he's not one to mess around. With his big, solid build, he's perfect for close-range combat and isn't afraid to get his hands dirty. But his bending style really shows how well he can hold his own. Unlike other waterbenders who tend to go to extremes, Tonrak keeps it grounded. No complex moves, just powerful, direct attacks that get the job done. And when he faced Unalak one-on-one, -on -one, he didn't back down. Sure, Unalak may have won, but Tonrak held his ground with everything he had, showing just how resilient and skilled he really is. Next up, we have Unalak. While most remember him as the villain, there's no denying he's an incredibly skilled bender. Honestly, all the spirit stuff kind of overshadowed just how good he was. Oh! Unalak's water bending is insanely fluid, tapping into the spiritual side of bending like no one else. He's mastered spirit bending and controls water with a level of precision that shows real skill. Whatever his motives, Unalak's talent makes him one of the water tribe's most gifted and definitely underrated benders. Number three is Ming Hua. Minghua is hands down one of the most creative waterbenders we've seen. She doesn't have arms, so what does she do? She creates her own water arms, turning what might be seen as a disadvantage into a powerful asset. Minghua's bending style is a blend of agility, offense, and movement that's just fun to watch. Every move she makes is precise, unpredictable, and dangerous. Minghua's adaptability and creativity really set her apart, and she deserves way more credit for it. Coming in at number two is Zhang Zhang. Zhang Zhang is a legend for good reason, and while he may get some respect, he still doesn't get nearly enough. I can't believe my former master has become nothing more than a simple savage. It is you who have embraced savagery, Zhao. This firebending master isn't just skilled, he's got serious discipline. Zhang Zhang treats firebending like an art of control, and that restraint is what makes him so powerful. Before learning firebending, you must learn water and earth. Water is cool and soothing, earth is steady and stable. His skills in creating massive walls of fire over water show that he understands firebending in a way that very few can. Assume your stance, wider. You're not even looking! Wider! Finally, at number one, we have Tarlock. I've tried to work with you, Korra, but you've made it impossible. He's one of the most controversial characters in the series, especially with his relentless drive to stop the Equalists. But let's put the politics aside for a second. Tarlock is a powerhouse waterbender, and he's also a bloodbender who can do it without a full moon, which is both terrifying and impressive. Why did you wait until now to fess up? I was terrified to tell because... Because Tarlock is a bloodbender! He bloodbent Avatar Korra! His control, skill, and quick thinking make him a serious threat. If things had been different, he could have been one of the Water Tribe's greatest assets. Although, he tried so hard to escape his father's dark legacy, only to fall into the same patterns of control and manipulation. He did make the ultimate sacrifice in the end. It was dark, it was heartbreaking, and it gave Tarlock this tragic depth that made him unforgettable. It will be just like the good old days. So there you have it, the top 11 underrated benders in the Avatar universe. Let me know who you think deserves more recognition. If you enjoyed watching, don't forget to hit that like button. And be sure to subscribe, this is Mind Bursters. Until next time, stay geeky. Good luck, and be careful. Remember, Janor is in charge. I answer to no man, or girl, even if she does have tattoos. Nilo.